Hey guys, welcome to another tips and tricks video for the Satec radio panel and uh, SPAD.next. Um, today we're going to focus on some of the, uh, the settings that I have, some of the customizations I have for my radio panels here, and uh, see if you like any of my uh, customizations, and if so, you can use them for yourself. So, um, by, I'll show you the first thing, is by default, if you're using the, uh, the normal Satec drivers, um, you're very limited as to what you can program. In fact, with normal Satec drivers, you can't really program anything. Uh, for your customization for each of your uh, displays. So what you're left with is, uh, as you can see right now, I got my channel for uh, all of my displays. As you can see, I got two radio panels here. So from my um, uh, upper and lower, from my left stack and my upper and lower from my right stack are all currently tuned in to the, uh, the NAV2 setting. So what that means is uh, if I go to my dial here, and I change my uh, standby frequency and I select it and change it, all, it's going to change on all of my panels because the NAV2 channel is going to be the same for all the panels. Now, um, for COM1 and COM2 and NAV1 and NAV2, that's the way I have it. That way I can program my uh, channels depending on if I'm flying from the uh, co-pilot seat or if I'm flying from the uh, the captain's chair here. So uh, I like to be able to have those on whichever stack is closest to me. But for other things like DME, um, I don't necessarily need to see DME on all four of my stacks, you know, so I program that to uh, something different. So let me show you what I got here going on right now. So I'm going to select DME on each of my channels here. Okay, so now I got uh, DME selected, but as you can see on each of my displays, it's all showing something totally different. So uh, I'll walk you through what I got here. Um, so on my um, upper DME for my left panel, I got, uh, you can see the 10.23. What that actually is, that's the ambient temperature. So that's the temperature that's uh, outside at this altitude uh, where I am right now. And um, the 4062, uh, that is what my current um, altitude is uh, above ground level. So that's not what my altitude is going to display on my altimeter. Altimeter is going to display my MSL altitude, but this is how high I am above the ground. So that's kind of cool to know, um, uh, especially if you're flying over mountainous terrain, you know, your altimeter might display something like uh, 8,500, but meanwhile, your actual altitude over ground might only be 200 feet. Right, so it's kind of cool to know uh, where you stand with your AGL here. Um, now down here on my lower side, uh, that's my actual DME setting. So that's going to be exactly the same as you would have in a normal SPAD.next driver. So uh, I'm not programmed into anything that has DME right now. So they're both going to be displaying zero. But if I had my uh, NAV1 and NAV2 uh, programmed into something that uh, did have a DME receiver, I would receive how far away I am from that particular station. And over on my right side, and keep in mind, I'm still on DME for each of these channels, and each of them is displaying something different. Uh, over here on my upper left, I have, that's my, um, uh, that's the ground elevation. So what that means is over this particular spot where I am right now, the height of the ground is 764 feet above sea level. So uh, that's cool when you want to, uh, when you're getting close to an airport and you want to know what the ground elevation is and uh, uh, where you are currently and everything so I can give you a good idea. So for example, if you were to take the ground elevation of where I am right now and subtract that from what my, um, uh, my altitude is, that should equal what my um, above ground altitude is, my uh, AGL. So that's just something that uh, you can see there, it's pretty cool. And on my right hand side, that's displaying my um, uh, my true airspeed, so my, my ground airspeed actually. So my indicated airspeed will be, let me see here, around just under 90, but my ground speed, as you can see, is over 90, it's 97. And that's our ground speed and not. So uh, that's always cool to see how fast you're traveling over ground, especially if you're traveling to a significant headwind, you know, because your airspeed indicator is going to say one thing, but your actual ground speed is going to be totally different depending on your altitude, depending on the wind and everything like that. So that's something cool to know. Um, down here for my DME on my uh, bottom left display, that 34 flashing from 33 to 35, that's actually my frames per second. So if I go up here, and I'm zooming here because I got this on here, yeah, so you could say about 33, 32, and uh, that's what that's displaying up there. And on my right hand side here, I got, uh, oh, you know what this is? <laughs> this is my uh, fuel remaining. 
in gallons. So this is saying I got 8.69 gallons of fuel remaining. So I'm running pretty low, so I'm gonna have to land this sucker pretty soon. And if I go over to my um, fuel gauge, you can see, yep, let me just zoom in here. Yeah, you can see that uh, my left and right are running dangerously low on fuel. So I'm already set up for an ILS approach to uh, runway 12 at uh, Hamilton uh, Airport. So I'll get myself on the ground and refuel, but <laughs> that's something I got to address here. So um, as you can see, I got DME uh, uh, setting on all four of my um, uh, switch channels here, and each of them is displaying something different rather than having you know the same thing just DME showing on all my displays, wasting up time, wasting up room here, you know? So uh, let's see what else I got here for transponder. Change this transponder for all of them here. Okay, so as you can see, my right side of each of my displays is set to the actual transponder. So, uh, you know, if I change something on here, it's going to change it for all of my displays. You know, uh, let's go, yeah, so it's going to change it for all the displays here. But on my left side on each channel, I got uh, something different with the exception of uh, my uh, altitude setting, um, altimeter setting on the top left of my right panel and the bottom left of my right panel those are uh those are the same so if i change let's go to 29 or 9 or 2 just for now even though that's going to be incorrect for what i'm flying right now um you can also see that i got uh the top left hand side as i change this here that's my um my altimeter setting in uh millibars and on the bottom left hand side that's my setting on inches and mercury so if i change but my dial on here, you know, you can see them both increasing. And that's kind of cool because you can see what uh, 30 inches of mercury equals in millibars. It's actually uh, uh, 1016 millibars. So, you know, that's pretty cool to see that there. Okay. And uh, over here, what do we got here? Uh, my bottom r left side here is... Uh, you know what? I can't remember what that is. Negative. Oh, I know what that is. This is a really, really cool one. Okay, yeah, yeah. What this is doing right now is this will show you how fast your um, your vertical speed is at touchdown, which is really, really cool. Because then you can see, um, you know, how hard you're hitting the ground and kind of, you know, try to improve your flying and everything like that. So when I'm not, uh, like when I'm in the air right now, what that's going to actually show me is what my vertical descent rate is. So on my um, vertical speed indicator, you can see I'm just uh, above 500, which is uh, which is adequately uh, ac accurately displayed on here too. So you know what, as I get close to landing here, I'll show you this setting because it's really, really cool. So what will happen is when you land, this number is not going to be switching like uh, uh, up and down everything, just going to be the, the exact number that you had when your wheels touched the ground. So that's something really cool. Now, the other cool thing that I got set up here, guys, is because of the DME setting, like uh, you see how if you go to COM1, for example, when you use the dials, there's, there's an actual value that you can change, right? But with DME, there's nothing really for you to change. You can't change it. It's a static value. It's just showing you how far away you are from the station, right? So what I did, since I got the, the knobs when I'm on DME uh, available for use, because you can't change anything in DME, um, I got them to set up various different things in the sim. So for example, I'm just going to pull up my GPS right now. Uh, give me a second, guys, here. Okay. And you know what? Let me make this bigger here. Uh, da, da, da. Oh, come on. Sorry, I'm trying to hold the cell phone as I uh, film this video and make things uh, bigger here. So my knobs for GPS, for example, my top knob here, you know, this will zoom in and zoom out of the GPS, you know. So that, that's a pretty cool thing to do. And uh, down here, if I switch this over uh, to left, it'll display my, um, uh, what is this not, oh, I'm on ADF, sorry. Uh, it'll change my orientation. So this will show you that, you know, I'm flying to the uh, south uh, east right now. Okay, so uh, that's pretty cool. You can change your orientation. And also, when you're in the menu buttons, uh, I got to go quickly because I'm about to land here. But when you're in the menu options, you know, I can change my, let me show you my hand here, you know, my, uh, my dial here to display the different pages. And I also have it so I can select uh, various, see how I selected CYHM, and I can uh, scroll down to different things here. You know, and I can select them with the, the buttons on here, you know, so I can get into all the different information here, 
show you what the runway orientation is and everything like that and uh, uh, I can get my frequencies and all kinds of stuff like that but you know what I'm just do, I'm gonna do a quick landing here and I'll show you what my um, that setting over here the ground speed elevation and then I'll get back to the other settings that we have in a minute so let me turn off my approach for autopilot and we'll do a landing and we'll do a one-handed landing because I got my hand on the cell phone lower some flaps reduce some airspeed here because I'm coming in really hot that's what happens when you do an instructional video while you're doing an approach for a landing here but uh, that's okay decrease the airspeed get this sucker down so here's my descent rate right now, which is really hot, <laughs> but that'll all change. I'll flare and uh, get this a nice smooth landing here. Thought I turned off my autopilot, apparently I didn't. Okay. Okay, so we just turn on the parking brake, reduce my throttle for now. Okay, so as you can see, my um, my landing uh, vertical speed at touchdown was uh, 273 feet per minute. So that that's pretty heavy. You know, I'd probably break my gear if that was a uh, real life. That's what you get for uh, uh, using your cell phone while flying. <laughs> so don't do that, guys. You know, just like you want to use it while you're driving, don't use it while you're flying. But since it's just an instruct instructional video, just to show you um, various things and everything like that, that's uh, that's how that works. And um, where that's really cool is when you're flying in a, in a heavy, you know, so in a heavy you want to have that under 200, you know, ideally the lower you can get the better. If you can fluff that in at, uh, you know, like 50 feet per second uh, vertical speed, that's really pretty cool. But uh, yeah, that's just uh, where we stand here. And um, you know what I want to show you here, actually? Um, let me get my uh, uh, GPS out of the way here. And I'm actually going to go into a heavy right now because I got some really cool settings on there. Uh, let's go to da, da, da. let's just fire up a 737 for a sec here and yeah WestJet's cool let's use them okay I'm in the 737 and I'm just gonna take off from right here where I landed in my uh, 172 so Probably not going to be a pretty takeoff and everything. It's not the way you would do it in real life, but hey, that's okay. We're just going to get things going here. And then once I'm in the air, I'll show you some of the features I got for the 737 here. And see, that's the other really cool thing about Spad.next. As you switch your aircraft, it's going to change uh, the profile for the aircraft. So I could have something totally different set up for each of my displays for my DME and everything. And I, most of them are around that's the same, but... Uh, there's a couple in here that are really cool that I got that's a little bit different here. So we just get in the air. And then once I'm in the air, I'll show you. Okay, so let me set my altitude. Okay, that's good for now. Okay, so we're climbing up here. Now, once we're in... Um, uh, like a more stable rate of climb here. I'll show you what, uh, let me raise my gear. Um, I'll show you one of the settings that I use all the time. That's super, super cool. Okay, now to show you first, I got uh, my um, prop pit, uh, pitch here, uh, this this uh, access lever. Uh, since you don't use this in a 737 because there is no propeller, I got this set up to activate my spoiler. So, for example, if I go to my outside view here, let me zoom in a bit here. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. A little bit more. Okay, that's cool. So, I'm going to start to lower this lever and I'll show you what it does on the outside. Just going to raise my spoilers, as you would imagine. Okay, and I I'm, can I'm, do this to any level I want. So, this is full spoilers up. But sometimes when you're coming in for approach, you don't want full spoilers. You just want to move the angle. You just want a little bit to slow you down, right? So, I can choose how much spoiler there how much spoilers I activate on here, okay? Now, in the outside view, you can easily see what spoiler lever you got, you know? So right now, the spoilers are totally retracted, and here, they're totally extended, okay? But when you're in the inside of the aircraft, uh, what you, the only way you can really tell, well, I got it set up for two ways, and I'm over speeding right now. Let me speed and lower my throttle. Um, the way that you can tell 
let me go to my cockpit view, is you can go over here and look at your uh, speed brake lever. So here it's fully up and here it's fully up. Let's go a little bit down here. And now you can see my lever going down and up again. But uh, when I'm in... When I'm in forward view here, I like to be able to know what my speed lever is without having to look down, you know, because I don't have easy dock or um, track IR right now. So um, uh, I like to know what it is uh, exactly. So what I got is I got down here uh, my, let me see, on my transponder dial down here, I got it to display what my spoiler level is. So right now it's zero. But as you can see, I'm lowering the knob. Now you can see I'm at 40%, 42, 50. And then here we got 100% spoiler. So, you know, I can actually see what my spoiler lever is. As, let me get both of these in the shot at the same time here. See how I'm 100% spoiler? You know, and I'm increasing it here. And then all the way up to zero. Now, the other really cool thing too is you can turn on your automatic spoilers too. So if I put my... Um, uh, spoiler down to this level right here that's actually activated my auto spoiler so you can see right now uh, in the flight that my lever is not all the way up it's uh, right into my uh, spoiler position so what that means is that in the air my spoilers will be fully retracted but once my wheels touch down on the ground it's going to automatically deploy my spoilers to uh, slow me down you know and uh, that, that's pretty cool I like having uh, the spoilers so you one less thing to do so when you touch down the ground you just apply your reverse thrusts and uh, slow yourself down the spoilers will come up on their own and then the spoilers will automatically disable on their own once you add a little bit of throttle they'll come down again so I'm not really going to show you that in this video here but you can uh, uh, try that on your own and uh, you'll see that it works so um, yeah that's uh, the uh, other thing I got here what else do I have for I think let me see here. I think everything else is the same. Uh, oh, you know what? There is one more I want to show you. Now, I'm in prepared uh, P3D right now, so it's not going to work. Unfortunately, that variable doesn't particularly work on uh, this. But in uh, Flight Sim, it does. What that is, is there's um, there's a, var a variable that you can use. It's called um, uh, altitude of the nearest airport. And that is just so cool. So, for example, let me pull up my GPS again. And let me go into here. Okay. So, these are the nearest airports. Now, when I have that uh, dial set up into one of my displays here, what it will do is it will actually display on my uh, radio panel the altitude of the nearest airport. So, in this case right now, uh, if I was in FSX, it would show me the altitude uh, of the uh, CNQ3 airport, you know. And then once I get close to something else, it'll show you uh, uh, the altitude of that. Where that comes in a really handy is if you have to divert to another airport, let's say you have an engine failure and you've got to get down somewhere really quick, you know, it can display the altitude of the nearest airport really quick just to give you a, a frame of reference, especially if you're flying somewhere um, uh, where there's mountainous terrain and everything where it's going to vary differently between the altitude that you're at now and what the altitude of the uh, the nearest airport could be, you know, so that's something cool. And I can't show you that here on, on um, uh, P3D because for some reason that variable doesn't work, but in FSX it does. But I'll go over to the, uh, the SPAD.next application and I'll show you how you program some of this stuff here. So uh, stay tuned for part two of this video and I'll show you the programming.